Hello, this is Ron Barris from Neiman's Independent Church. I'm reading today from 1 Kings chapter 19, the storm of fear and doubt that Elijah the prophet experienced. After the great victory on Mount Carmel in 1 Kings 18, we read in chapter 19, beginning in verse 1, Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done and how he had killed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah, saying, So may the gods do to me, and more also, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by this time tomorrow. Then he was afraid, and he got up and ran for his life, and came to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left his servant there. But he himself went a day's journey into the desert, and came and sat down under a broom tree. And he asked that he might die, saying, It is enough now, O Lord, take away my life, for I am no better than my father's. And he lay down and slept under the broom tree. And behold, an angel touched him and said, Arise and eat. And he looked, and behold, there was at his head a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down again. And the angel of the Lord came again a second time and touched him and said, Arise and eat, for the journey is too great for you. And he arose and ate and drank and went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Sinai, the mountain of God. And there he came to a cave and lodged in it. And behold, the word of the Lord came to him and said, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I only, am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And he said, Go out and stand on the mountain before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great strong wind tore the mountains and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind, an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, the sound of a still, small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped his face in his cloak and went out and stood at the entrance of the cave. And there came a voice to him, saying, What are you doing here, Elijah? He said, I have been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts, for the people of Israel have forsaken your covenant, thrown down your altars, killed your prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said to him, Go, return on your way to the desert of Damascus, and when you arrive, you shall anoint Haziel to be king over Syria, and Jehu, the son of Nimshi, you shall anoint to be king over Israel. And Elisha, the son of Shaphat, of Abel-Meholah, you shall anoint to be prophet in your place. And the one who escapes from the sword of Hazael shall Jehu put to death. And the one who escapes from the sword of Jehu shall Elisha put to death. Yet I will leave 7,000 in Israel, all the knees that have not bowed to Baal. Elijah was consumed in the storm of fear and doubt. Well, it had a foundation for it. Jezebel was a wicked, bloodthirsty queen, and she often made her threats come to pass. Elijah seemingly had no fear to stand before the king, no fear to stand before the people of Israel, no fear to stand before the prophets of Baal. But when it came to Jezebel's threat... The fear overcame him. God was merciful and gracious, gave him food and rest and preparation, and called him to go to Mount Sinai. Where God had appeared to Moses, now God would appear to Elijah. And God appeared in a storm. A storm of strong wind. No doubt Elijah fled back into the cave. Then an earthquake. No doubt he fled out of the cave. And then a fire, a lightning blast, and he fled back into the cave. And then the still small voice. Oh, Elijah was filled with fear after fear after fear. 
But what was it that took the fear away? The still small voice of the Word of God. What is it that will take our fears away in the midst of a day of great fear and panic? It is the still small voice of God's Word. That is where our fear comes to an end. When we listen to the words of God, fear not. I will help you, says the Lord of hosts. Lord, we thank you that we find relief from our fear in your word. May we heed it today, we pray, for your glory. In Jesus' name, amen. Standing on the promises that cannot fail When the howling storms of doubt and fear assail By the living word of God I shall prevail Standing on the promises of God Standing, standing Standing on the promises of God, my Savior. Standing, standing. I'm standing on the promises of God.